The accounts payable function is loaded with tasks needed to keep any organization running at full speed. Or if any of these major tasks are ignored, the organization would quickly grind to a screeching halt. After all, how long do you think it would take critical vendors to cut off services if they haven't been paid? Join us for a walk through a typical week in an accounts payable operation. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss a few tasks you might not have realized are performed by accounts payable groups everywhere. Okay, Monday. It's bright and early on Monday morning and already there's a stack of mail, both paper and electronic, to be opened. Most of that mail contains invoices and as you are probably painfully aware, in many cases you're going to be receiving more than one copy of the same invoice. The person responsible for the mail opens the mail, both the paper mail and the email, and forwards invoices to the person responsible for each invoice. In many cases, paper invoices invoices will be turned over to one person who scans them and then forwards the electronic document to the person responsible for processing for them. How do they know which invoices go to which processor? Many, but definitely not all, organizations divide their supplier base by letter of the alphabet. So for example, Mary Jane might work on the letters A through C. John might have letters D through H. Why does John have more letters than Mary Jane? Because in my hypothetical situation, the organization has more suppliers that start with A, B, or C than it does suppliers in the D through H category. Once the invoices are received, they are sent out, almost always electronically now, for approval. It is only when they come back with that approval that the associate can begin processing the invoices, verifying them for accuracy, and scheduling them for payment based on agreed upon payment terms. If you wonder why we devote Monday to processing invoices, it's because in many organizations they receive the bulk of their invoices Invoices on Monday. Why is that, you may wonder? It's because many organizations, their suppliers, create and mail invoices on Friday. Some only do it at the end of the month, which is not a great idea from a cash flow standpoint, but that's not your problem and it's not the focus of our talk today. Others do it every day. You'll note that I said create invoices, not print and mail invoices. That's because many are now electronic documents and are emailed. And I was, will suspect we will get to the point where all invoices are me emailed a lot faster than we're going to get to all electronic payments. But I digress. Let's focus for a moment on the verification process just for a few seconds. In best practice organizations, this is done using the three-way match. We did a few short videos on this all important topic and I'll leave a link to that short playlist in the description for you to watch after you finish this if you need more information on the three-way match. Now one last note and then we'll move on to Tuesday. If the verification process fails, i.e. there is something on the invoice does not match what the processor expects to find at, it is considered discrepant and put aside to be researched at a later point but not too much later because the goal is to get invoices corrected and verified before the due date. For if you don't pay on time, the supplier doesn't know why you're not paying and they will go ahead and send another copy of their invoice trying to get paid. This creates more unnecessary work for the accounts payable team and it also increases your chance of making a duplicate payment. Tuesday, invoices will continue to arrive and be processed, but not nearly at the level received on Monday. In in fact, in many parts of the country, the lowest volume of mail will be received on Tuesdays. Is this the case in your shop? Let us know in the comments which day, if any, you receive the lowest volume of mail. But the lower volume doesn't mean that the accounts payable team is lounging about. Far from it. There are many other tasks to be addressed. Some will work with existing suppliers who are still paying by check to convert these vendors to receiving payments either electronically via ACH or PCOD, whichever is appropriate for their business. Ideally, change of bank accounts for ACH payments received by emails are handled by the folks responsible for the master vendor file. But the reality is, in many organizations, that work is handled by the invoice processor 
responsible for the accounts. Remember the letter breakdown? It is critical that if your organization puts the responsibility for this seemingly minor task on the processes that management understand that this task is time consuming. I want to talk about this for just about 30 seconds because the implications of getting this wrong can be catastrophic, both for the company and the processor who falls for a fraudulent request. Yes, that's right. Criminals usually operating in another country, so it's hard to actually catch them and get your money back, are now trying to defraud organizations by impersonating suppliers and getting them to send payments to accounts they control rather than to the legitimate bank account. So it is critical that every organization understand this and make sure that their processes who are responsible for doing this verification have adequate time to do it. For if the funds are sent to the criminal, it is next to impossible to get those funds back when you finally realize what happened. And sometimes that doesn't happen for days or weeks later. That's not the only task handled on Tuesdays. Accounts Payable also produces reports for management, how many and which ones will vary from organization to organization. But there's a wealth of business intelligence hidden in that accounts payable data. And as time goes on and technology takes on more of the repetitive work of the accounts payable team with a little training, an emphasis here on the word little, your accounts payable professionals can mine that data for the insights you need to run a more efficient and effective operation company-wide, not just in accounts payable. Wednesday. Wednesday is audit day. I'm not talking about IRS audit or anything as nefarious as that. This is an in-house review many organizations do, both before and after payments are made, looking for any duplicates that may have been made. It happens more frequently than you might imagine. Many have developed, many organizations this is, have developed their own checking routines in addition to doing statement audits looking for open credits. Open credits can represent a variety of things, including duplicate payments. So a regular review of those open credits addresses numerous issues not only the recovery of duplicate payments. And to be clear, most of your suppliers will not automatically return your duplicate pays or go out of their way to make sure you are aware of open credits. You have to ask for a statement. To do a statement audit, therefore, it's necessary first to get the statement. So while a few suppliers do automatically send statements, most won't, and you'll have to request them. In addition to the audit work, many accounts payable groups also monitor expense reports and review administering the company's reimbursement policy. This, to be honest, is a truly thankless task, but it needs to be done so the reimbursements can be included in that Friday payment run, which we're going to talk about. And of course, the processing of invoices continues. And speaking of invoices, many organizations with payment runs on Friday will have a cutoff date on Wednesday afternoon. This means any invoices or expense reports received after the cutoff time will be held for payment until the next payment run, usually the following week. It is important that the cutoff time be well publicized if the accounts payable team wishes to avoid, avoid unpleasant confrontation with other employees, especially those looking for an expense reimbursement when they have a looming due date on their personal credit card. Thursday. Earlier we mentioned discrepant invoices, those with a verification problem. These are typically put to the side for research and resolution when the processor has time. Now, to be honest, for most process invoice processes, this is not something they look forward to. So this work tends to get backburnered for longer than it should. It always amazes me that the invoice processor, the person with the least amount of knowledge about the transaction, is tasked with resolving the discrepancy. But that's the way it works. Depending on the issue, they may need to contact either purchasing or the supplier for clarification. Sometimes it involves both parties, thus dragging the resolution out for an even longer period of time. Ideally, as mentioned earlier, this should be done in a very timely manner so invoices can be paid on time and the company not receive yet another copy of that invoice. These discrepant invoices should be tracked, usually by the manager. Some ERPs have the ability to do this tracking, and other times it could be done in an Excel spreadsheet. This tracking can be used to follow up and make sure invoices don't remain discrepant and unpaid for weeks and months at a time. In 
information regarding the processor, the purchaser, and the vendor should be included in this evaluation on your Excel spreadsheet, as well as reasons for the discrepancy. Typically, managers will develop a list of typical reasons and then code them that way when resolved. Some of the standard issues might include things like wrong price on invoice, wrong price on purchase order, wrong quantity, etc. Then, periodically, the manager who's keeping this analysis should analyze this reporting to identify bottlenecks creating problems. Then, as appropriate, these issues can be addressed. Friday. If it's Friday, it must be payday, but not for your employees, for your suppliers. Just a few short years ago, this meant check runs. And while that is still part of the process today, it means creating a payment file with ACH payments, check payments, and some card payments. Typically, if an organization is paying with wire transfers, they are handled separately, as they tend to be fewer in number and larger in amount. The goal in many, many organizations is now to get away from paper checks. So many organizations will have a large number of ACH payments included. The card payments tend to get made at the point of sale, so there should be fewer of them. In some cases, and thankfully this is getting to be a smaller and smaller number, some checks still require manual signatures. This means the AP staff has to get signatures on these checks. Theoretically, when the checks are taken out for signature, the person signing them is supposed to review the backup and make sure everything is correct before signing the check. Now notice I said theoretically. That is because often this review is simply not done. To be blunt and completely tactless, which I'm going to be, if the review is not done, those organizations are wasting everyone's time by getting that manual signature. But I digress. I could carry on about that for quite some time. Once the checks are printed, they have to be put in an envelope and mailed. As you can probably guess, this is a very manual process, and as we move away from paper checks and paper invoices, a lot of this manual labor can be eliminated. Also, more than a few organizations delegate the check production process to their banks, as banks do an excellent job on this non-value-add task. If you are still printing more than a few checks, you might want to consider outsourcing this to the bank, assuming, and this is a big assume, that all your internal controls are in place. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to accounts payable as to what goes on normally week in and week out. It does not address, for example, in January when AP teams have multiple year-end tasks to complete and they also have to get those odious 1099s issued and out the door along with the associated reporting to the IRS. There's also unclaimed property reporting, which is handled sometimes in accounts payable in May and or November, depending upon the states involved, and the ongoing tasks of monitoring sales tax and reporting and accruing and remitting use tax where appropriate. And of course, depending on the industry, there could be special industry reporting requirements, but that's not all. What else is there? Answering phone calls, responding to vendor inquiries, pulling data from the accounts payable system for folks who may need it, and a lot more. In fact, recently, we broke down the day in the life of an accounts payable manager in a short video. Think it can't be that difficult? You can watch it right now to find out just how difficult it can be using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.